Hello there friends, it's Jackie Ballhuis from Comp and Stampers. Today, we're going to make a card using just stamps, ink, and paper. Now this video is gonna show you how to make a quick and easy card with only a few supplies. I'm keeping it very simple. It's actually geared towards those of you that are true beginners to card making. I have lots of tips I'm gonna share with stamps, ink, and paper to show you one, that that's all you need, but then how to use those stamps, ink, and paper to make a really cute, quick and easy card. So if you've been card making for a while, I encourage you to watch along anyway, because I think I have lots of tips to share. Some of them might help you even if you thought you knew it all. So I hope you join in and watch and let's make a card using stamps, ink and paper. So like I said, we are going to focus on a quick and easy card geared towards those of you that are beginners or those of you that don't have a lot of supplies or want to just keep it super simple. Now, I like to call these cards SIP cards. You need stamps, you need ink, and you need paper. Now, normally when I do a SIP card, we just dive right in. But today I thought I would break it down a little bit and we'd talk a little bit more about the stamps, the ink, and the paper and give you some tips as we go. So the stamps that we're gonna use are actually two different sets here. I've got Nature's Print and Kindness, what do we got? Kindness Expressions. Now what I wanna share with you on these stamps is these are the red rubber, or they call them cling mount. When they come, they're in this nice little um, sheet of rubber. You have to kind of punch them out. I like to keep that sheet of rubber in there because that way I know I have all my stamps. Like when I've been using them, I know where they go and I know that I have all of them. So that's kind of up to you. Other people throw that away and just keep them in the case. Now for this card, we're going to use these two pieces. And I also want to share with you that the stamps come with a sheet of stickers or labels let me see, I think this one I have one on. Now, I don't always put them on my stamps. Well, actually, I rarely put them on my stamps. And it's really kind of a personal preference. To me, I don't know, I don't need them. I'm lazy, it takes time. But a lot of other people really like them. So if you want to put those on, the easiest way to do that is take your sheet and you'll see for each stamp, you can peel off the backing of that sticker. Now keep the sticker or label, whatever you wanna call it, on the sheet. Don't peel the whole thing off because it's really hard to place on here and it's super sticky. So once you get it on here, there's no way to pull it up and readjust it. So we gotta get it right the first time. So once I've pulled that off, I take my stamp and I lay it right down there in the opening. That opening where it's cut should fit the top of that stamp exactly. Pull it up and there we go, we have the label on it. So that's how you put the label on the stamps. Now stamps come, or they don't come with blocks. So we use our acrylic blocks. Now these come in a variety of sizes. Um, the best deal, if you know you're going to like continue to card make, is to buy the bundle where you get one of each because then you get a discount on them. Otherwise, buy a few of the standard ones. Um, if you look at the products online or in the catalog, it will tell you, like for this stamp set, I don't think it tells you on, on the stamp set, but on the catalog it does, what blocks you need for these stamps. Because you really want to make sure you use a block that's big enough, but you know, because if your stamp's kind of hanging over, you're going to have problems getting a good image, but you don't want it too big. Like I wouldn't want to put this one on there because now we got a lot of block to potentially, you know, get some ink where we don't want it. So we're going to put that one on there and we're going to put this one on here. Okay. So those are ready to go. Now you don't have to have a block for every single stamp you're using. I'm a little spoiled, have lots of blocks. It's easier for me to put them all on just as I'm doing videos to make it easier. Um, but otherwise you can stamp, clean it, put it in the case and put your next one on there. Now the greeting for this card is we're going to take this one called Thanks So Much. Um, out of our kindness expressions. And as I put this on the block, I wanna give you a little tip. I like to make sure that my stamps that are greetings, it doesn't matter with these, but that I get them straight on the block because that will help me stamp it straight when I'm stamping it onto my card. So my little tip is to use grid paper and I take my block and I line it up nice and straight on one of the lines on the block. And then as I'm looking through, and I usually have to put my head right down there, um, so it's a little hard since I can't do that. And I look through to the lines and I try to get the words nice and straight using those lines. But then 
I take it one step further and I'll take my ink pad and I'll ink this up and then I'll stamp on my grid paper. And I'm gonna again, line that block up the best I can with a line on the grid paper and stamp it. And now I can look and see how it's stamped. And I'm like, eh, it's pretty straight. I mean, we could get real picky and it does go down just a little bit. Um, so if you wanted to, you could try to adjust that a little bit and stamp it again. Ooh, look at that, looks a little bit better. So now I feel confident my words are straight on there. So we're good to go. So there's your little tip on stamps. Now with inks, um, our classic pads come in all the colors. With these pads, I found the easiest way to open them is hold them in your hands and just pinch. You can see I pinched there, it popped open, and then the top flips and slides. Now the reason for that is you should store your ink pads upside down. So this way, if you notice, we'll take this one, it's being naturally stored. My ink's up here, naturally stored upside down. So when I you know, keep these, I, I put them right side up, but it's really upside down. Now your ink pads, you will notice I have, let's see, we should close it here to show you. When you purchase these ink pads, you'll see how I have the little label on the end here. It says Old Olive. Well, if you look at the bottom of the pads, this is one of those little secrets that not everybody knows about. There are stickers on the bottom here that you can peel off and stick them on the edge of your pad. So that way, depending on how you store your pads, you can stack them, put them on a shelf. You can always read the color. Now I also, there's one sticker, and obviously it's not on there anymore, that is blank or it doesn't have words because it does have all the other languages as well. And this one's kind of wearing off. But that one that's blank, I stick it down in the little groove there. You can see it better on Garden Green. And I just use my Sharpie marker and I write the name of it. That way when this pad is open and slid in like that, you know, they don't look a whole lot different without seeing that label. But with having that label there, it makes it easy for me to see um, what color they are. Now, because I know someone's going to wonder, why do I have 23 and 25 on there? I store my pads in rainbow order um, and so I all of my pads once I figured out the order that I store them in on my shelf I numbered them and it just makes it really easy for me to put them away so I know this one will go you know under 22 and on top of 24 so that's what that little number is there so okay there's our stamps there's our ink and finally for our paper for this card we're using a full sheet of eight and a half by eleven all cardstock comes eight and a half by eleven and we're just gonna use this for our card base. Now, you can cut this either in half the long way or in half the short way. I'm going to go the short way, which means five and a half. And so we're gonna just cut that. And this will give you two card bases to make a card with. And then of course, we need an envelope. So you can buy a pack of envelopes. This is the regular, it's the medium size envelope, but this is what will fit a half sheet of cardstock folded in half. Now, I like to layer, and I generally use colored cardstock, but for this one, we're keeping it so easy, we're just gonna use our white. And I wanted to do just a little bit more than having you know, just a white card folded in half and everything stamped right there. So I'm gonna actually layer it white on white. So I'm gonna take this other piece, and I'm gonna cut it down to three and three quarters by five. And this will be the layer for the front of my card. Now these measurements I will have over on my website. So if you look in the video description, there will be a link down there and it'll take you right to the blog post that has pictures of the card I'm gonna make today, plus a couple others that I'm gonna show you. Um, but it will also give you a list of all the color supplies and all my cutting measurements. So if you'd like to copy this card, I'll make it as easy as I can for you. Okay. For the card that we're making today, we're gonna to start out by taking that large thanks so much stamp, and I want to stamp it first, because I'm gonna essentially stamp it on here and then work everything else around it. Now, when you're inking up your stamp, tap, 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 move it around that pad, make sure you get it inked really good. And then I'm gonna go, let's go about right there. Now, as I placed it down there, I was kind of looking at my block. Was it straight on the cardstock? Because I know those words are straight on the block. So that kind of helps you line things up to get it relatively straight. 
Now, for this one, this is gonna be just a very generic thank you card. It would be great for a masculine card um, or for anything. And again, with this, um, what is it, Nature's Prince with these stamps, these are perfect for any occasion. So this could be birthday, thinking of you, sympathy, make it whatever you want. Now, I notice how I stamp that, and then I am going to actually stamp it a second time without re-inking it. And we'll do that again here, because you'll see I get the darker old olive, and then stamp it again, and it's a little bit lighter. I do that a lot because I feel like it just gives a lot of dimension to a card that's really kind of flat because we're not doing layering, we're not cutting anything out. Um, but when you can get a couple different colors in there, that'll help just give it some more dimension. And then we'll take our fern, and let's ink this one up. We're gonna do kind of the same thing here. Let's stick that one up there and Look what I did. Now I'm gonna tell you about that. Um, I caught the edge there because I wasn't paying a whole lot of attention. And this is probably a good thing to do to show you. When you ink this up, you wanna tap flat, but when you go to press down, you're gonna press and make sure you don't rock it. Look at that one, there's a good one. But as soon as I put it down there and I kind of rock it and put some pressure over here, I catch that ink that I'm getting some ink on. Now. Another thing that you can do, if you have some stamps, and it seems to happen quite often like with the same stamps. Let's see, I don't have any in this case. But um, you could actually take a scissors, and I probably should on this one, take kind of a heavy duty scissors and trim some of that rubber off. Cut it closer to the image, and then you won't you know, worry about that as often. So now you saw my boo-boo, I'm gonna show you how to fix it. You're gonna flip that cardstock over and we're gonna start over. Um, and it looks like I got a few little fingerprints on there, but that's okay. Now, I always tell people, don't glue your layers down until you're done stamping. Because, oh, I, do I have ink on my hands? I don't know where I'm picking all that up. Well, it'll get covered up here. But there's two sides to every piece of paper. So as long as we don't glue it down, we've got the opportunity to come back and use the other side of it. Okay, so with this one, we're gonna be super careful. Let's see if I can do it this time without rocking it. There we go, be gentle. Stamp a couple in there. Um, okay, don't rock it, Jackie. <laughs> There we go, there we go. Let's see, how many more should we put in here? We can put a little bit in there too, huh? There, so what I was really trying to do is just fill in the whole card so that that thanks kind of pops. We've got that nice greenery around it. Now, before we finish this, I am bringing in one other stamp set. It's called Layering Leaves, and it has this little speckle stamp. I actually keep this out of the stamp set. Now there's quite a few stamp sets that have something similar. It's a speckle stamp and I keep it out of that box because I use it all the time. So for this card, I'm gonna ink it in black and I'm gonna be real gentle. I'm gonna just put a few little speckles here and there. Um, I think it's one of those things and, and it's personal opinion, you might not like it, but it just, gives you a little bit more dimension on there. Now, real quick here, before we glue that down, we're gonna go to the inside of our card here. Let's stamp a couple leaves on the inside. And then we also wanna make sure we always stamp our envelope. Stamp it or do something to the envelope flap. Sometimes I'll put designer series paper there, but I like to say no naked envelopes. We'll put our little speckles on there so everything coordinates. And we'll do the same on the inside, just a few of those. And now we're gonna just take our adhesive. And this is really just a one layer, super simple, limited supply stamp, ink, and paper card. And we're gonna stick that right on the center of the card. And I think by putting it on a layer like that, it just, it gives you a nice border because we stamped everything off the edge of the card stock. And it just adds a little bit more than if we would have just stamped on the card. So there you go, simple card, stamps, ink, and paper. Now let me share with you just a couple other ones that I made. 
Now these two were done the same way. You can see I just used some different greetings. Here I have a happy birthday and here I have a thank you. Oh, that one I didn't do the speckles and that one I did. And you can see the difference. I Again, I just think it adds a little bit to it. And then I did add um, a greeting on the inside. So forget what stamp set this is. I'll have it on the blog post. I'll list all the stamp sets I used. Um, but that one, it also had other little phrases that went with it. So I stuck that on the inside. And the happy birthday, you're all kinds of amazing. This came out of that same stamp set. These two were from the same. So you can see, simple layered card, quick and easy. Now I have two other ones, as long as we're doing simple layer cards here. A happy birthday and a thank you with, I believe the stamp set's called Petal Park. All that listed. Again, one stamp set and that greeting and just adding something to the inside. It's quick, it's easy, you don't need a lot of supplies. These are perfect beginner cards or just people that wanna make quick and easy cards without a lot of supplies. So I hope you enjoyed this video and all the tips that I shared throughout it. Um, it's perfect for the beginner stamper to help you get started. And if you have any questions, leave us a comment, reach out to us. We're here to help you in any way that we can. And I appreciate you watching. Share this with your crafty friends, especially those that are just starting stamping and, and need some help getting started. So I appreciate it. And I can't wait to stamp with you again. Have a stamp happy day.